Good morning, Hive friends. Welcome to Hive Time with Teacher Lori. It's me, and it's the week of Christmas. And today, all aboard the Polar Express. Are you ready? Are you in your jammies still? Good. We're going to go on the Polar Express today to the North Pole. Can't be Christmas without the Polar Express. Let's do it. And all of my Hive friends are invited on the Polar Express with me today, so come aboard. But Heads up to a few of you. Listen, Penelope, Hermione, all aboard the Polar Express, come aboard with me today. Elijah, Reagan, all aboard the Polar Express, come aboard with me today. Donovan, all aboard the Polar Express. Benjamin Emerson Delaney, get your train riding shoes on, your train riding gear, all aboard the Polar Express, let's go to the North Pole. Piper, Theo, Come aboard the Polar Express with the this magical day. Josie, Brinley, would you like to come aboard the Polar Express today to go see Santa at the North Pole? I think so. Maddie, David, Ashwin, Nathaniel, you guys ready to go to the Polar Express? You're never too old to come on the Polar Express with us today. Dixie, Lucy Mae, Ruby, I know you three are ready. Woods, Birdie, you ready for a Polar Express day today? I think so, so all aboard the Polar Express. Did I get everybody? I think I got everybody. Just wanted to make sure all of my high friends, remember you're all invited, but everybody all aboard the Polar Express. So parents, all aboard the Polar Express by Chris Van Allsburg. Parents, here's your 10 minutes. It might be a little longer today because you know what? We're gonna go on a journey. We're gonna go on a train ride today. So get your coffee, get your tea, take your time. We got you on this journey. Say goodbye to your kiddos for now. They're gonna go on a magical train ride, but don't worry, they'll be back. Okay, friends, let's get our hands, circle time hands ready so we can get ready to go on the Polar Express. Put your hands up. Put your hands down, slide them very slowly, slide them very fast. Put your hands up, put your hands down, clap them very slowly, clap them very fast because we're so excited to go on the Polar Express. Put your hands up, put your hands down, roll them very slowly, roll them very fast, lay them in your lap. Can you say it with me? All aboard! Because that's what conductors say as it's time to get on the train. And where should we go today? Should we go to the North Pole to see Santa? I think so. So, here we go. The Polar Express. Are you as excited as I am? Oh, beautiful book. The Polar Express by Chris Van Allsburg and it's uh, Hewton, Miffleton, and Hardcourt's publisher. The Polar Express. I know some of you have seen the movie, but nothing beats a book. So I'm going to move. I am in the kitchen so you can see the oven by me. On Christmas Eve, Many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend had told me I'd never hear. The ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. There is no Santa, my friend had insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did hear sounds, though not of ringing bells. From outside came the sound of a hissing and hissing steam and squeaking metal. I looked through my window with observing eyes and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took a very large pocket watch out of his vest and looked up in my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs out the door. 
All aboard, the conductor cried out. I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where, I asked. Why, to the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express. I took his outstretched hand and he pulled me aboard. I took his outstretched hand and he pulled me aboard. Can you take my outstretched hand? I'm pulling you aboard the Polar Express. The train was filled with other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and ate candies with nougat centers as white as snow. We drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside, the lights of towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. Mm. Hot chocolate as thick as candy bars. Soon there were no more lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forests where lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our trains that thundered through the quiet wilderness. Oh! We climbed mountains so high it seemed if we would scrape, scrape the moon, but the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. Like a car on a roller coaster. The mountains turned into hills, the hills turned to snow-covered plains. We crossed a batter, a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like a lights of the strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen sea. There, said the conductor, is the North Pole. I don't know about you guys, but I still believe in Santa and magic. And that's okay. The North Pole, it was a huge city standing alone in the top of the world, filled with factories where every Christmas toy was made. At first, we saw no elves. They were gathering at the center of the city, the conductor told us. That is where Santa will give his first gift of Christmas. Who receives the first gift, we all ask? The conductor had answered, he will choose one of you. Look, shouted out one of the children, the elves. Outside we saw hundreds of elves. Our train drew closer to the center of the North Pole. We slowed to a crawl, so crowded were the streets with Santa's helpers when the Polar Express could go no further. We stopped, and the conductor led us outside. Look at all of the elves. And that big train in the middle. We pressed through the crowd to the edge of a large open circle. In front of us stood Santa's sleigh. They and the reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced, ringing the silver sleigh beds that hung from their harnesses. It was a magical sound like I've never heard. Across the circle, the elves moved apart and Santa appeared. The elves, the elves cheered wildly. Can you cheer wildly? Woo! For Santa? I can hear you. So can Santa. He marched over to us and pointed to me, said, let's have this fellow right here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor handed me up. I sat on Santa's knee and he asked, now, what would you like for Christmas? I knew I could have any gift I could imagine, but the thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside Santa's giant bag. What I wanted more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. When I asked, Santa smiled. Then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from the reindeer harness. Dixie wants one too. He stood up the bell and held it high and he called, the first gift of Christmas. A clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval and Santa handed me the bell and I put it in my bathrobe pocket. The conductor helped me down from Santa's sleigh. Dixie wants a bell too. He shouted out the names of the reindeer and he cracked his whip. He charged his team forward and they climbed into the air. Santa circled above us, then disappeared in the cold, dark polar sky. On Dasher, on Dancer, on Prancer, on Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. And Rudolph.
Maybe it was at a Rainier game. As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, the other children asked to see the bell. I reached into my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. I had lost the silver bell from Santa Claus's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it, one of the children said. But the train gave a sudden lurch and started moving. We were on our way home. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood in my doorway and waved goodbye. Bye-bye to the conductor. The conductor said something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What? I yelled, what? He cupped his hands over his mouth and said, Merry Christmas, he shouted. The Polar Express let out a loud blast from its whistle, toot, toot, and sped away. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I opened our presents when it looked as if everything had been unopened. Sarah found one little box behind the tree. I know, Dex. Inside, with my, it had my name on it. Inside was a silver bell. Found this in the seat of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Sign, Mr. C. I shook the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I could ever hear. But my mother said, that's too bad. Yes, said my father, it's broken. When I had shaken the bell, my parents had not heard the sound. I know Dix, Dixie wants to hear the sound too. When I shaken the bell, my parents had not heard the sound. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell. But as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me, as it does for all who truly believe. Now you know, Santa and Christmas is a magical part. And going on the Polar Express and believing in the goodness and the magic and giving toward others the beautiful of Christmas is something we can all do. And you know what? The magic never dies. And the sound of that bell, I know, Dixie says I know, the sound of the bell will not go away for you. If you just, be, if you believe in being good and a good person and giving back and making magic, I'm giving her the bell. And making magic for other people, you can be that Christmas magic for somebody else. Thank you for going on the Polar Express with me today and being part of my hive. Please subscribe to this channel so we can hear more stories. But thank you, hi friends. I love you so much. Merry Christmas to all who celebrate. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy and merry magical everything to all of you friends. Dix is now shaking the bell too because she believes in magic. And I believe in you. Okay, friends. Catch your Christmas bees with me. Bzz and bring it home a baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee. Ouch, it stung me. I'm talking to my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm talking to my baby bumblebee. They said what? Be magical to others. Be magical to yourself. I let go of my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I let go of my baby bumblebee. They're happy to be free. Bye, hi friends. See you next time for another story on Hive Time. Thank you for coming aboard the Polar Express with me and Dixie. She's next to me here today, if you didn't hear her. She's now shaking that first bell of Christmas. Have a great day. Be magical.